the six to seven figure show episode 117 the best of the six to seven figure show series broadcasting from the valley of the sun outside phoenix arizona this is the six to seven figure show tired of working so hard and having no time take your six figure practice and turn it to a thriving seven figure enterprise and now your host author speaker mentor and strategist Frank Bria. Welcome to the Six to Seven Figure Show. I'm your host, Frank Bria. Welcome to the special best of series. Before we get to today's uh, hand selected episode, a quick message from our sponsor brought to you by High Ticket Program. Any service business owner looking to reach seven figures suffers from the same problems. When you start the journey, you're on your own, managing tasks and maybe a few team members. But as a seven figure business, now you need a team that's executing for you day in and day out. Somewhere along the way, you have to hire, train, and manage these team members. Even if you've never done this stuff before yourself. And if you don't manage scale and growth at the same time, you'll end up crashing under the weight of new customers or building an expensive operation you can't afford to keep running. If you want to avoid these problems and get past seven figures, then let's talk. Let me map out a plan for you of pain-free growth. I'd like to speak with you personally and tailor the plan for you. So text HTP to 602-698-7575. Now that is my direct line. Those messages come to me directly. So if you're serious about finally getting past the seven figure mark in your business, text HTP to 602-698-7575. Seven five. I am absolutely delighted to be joined today by Daniel Thomas Hine, who is the founder and CEO of Ev Evolution Eat, a transformational health coaching company. Uh, he works with high performers sort of master their diets, build healthy eating habits that basically uh, that last forever. The, this is the the idea is to create permanent transformation. Um, he's a student of self mastery, world class coach, serial entrepreneur. Uh, Daniel's helped hundreds of entrepreneurs become peak performers while also building and selling a number of businesses over his career. So thanks for joining us, Daniel. Absolutely thrilled to have you. Frank, man, it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. No, pleasure's all mine. So um, there's this interesting connection in your background between the um, healthy diet and eating and peak performance. I mean, Obviously, these two things are related, but can you kind of uh, connect the dots for us? Why are these two things like core principles for you? Hmm. Well, you can't be a peak performer without being healthy. And you can't be healthy without having a healthy relationship with food, which hmm. whether we want to look at it or not, this culture... Well, that is our entire nation and, and all of the West. <laughs> um, this society, I should say, has a very loaded relationship with food, whereby we're more often eating, not because we're hungry, but for all of these other reasons, right? Some of them being, uh, or most, most of them being um, be because we're emotional beings. We eat yeah. because we're feeling something. Right. And in this day and age when we're overloaded with so much stress, so much coming at us at all times, so much stimulation, so much distraction. I mean, we live in a reactionary world where there's just so much happening all at once. We simply don't know how to process all of that energy. And therefore, we, we end up coping uh, more often than not, more often than we'd like to admit, by eating right? Be either as a way to just like pause and give ourselves a break or because we're stressed and because we're looking for that dopamine hit. Um, a lot of this stuff goes back to childhood. Our, we were shown love by, by being given food. For me, that, that's my story. Yeah. Um, and so we resort to food to feel better or to fill some sort of emotional need, right? And, and or simply to mitigate stress, right? Yeah. Or to, 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 to inject some sort of happiness or <laughs> delight into our days. And so food addiction uh, is the biggest addiction of them all. We all have it to, in some 
way, shape or form because we literally have to eat all the time. So we're always focused on it. And because of the way that food is marketed to us, it's become out of control. And yeah. it's also, you know, your drug of choice you can find right around the corner. It's ubiquitous. You can get it anywhere on your terms all the time. And now I can order it straight to my door without even moving an inch. Right. right. So, so like, so I look at our relationship with food and the way that we go about building habits around eating as a core principle in mastering yourself, given that we have to eat anyways, right? Like it, we have to eat all the time. So let's start looking at things that we have to do as human beings, no matter what, and make it a meta practice for becoming better in life, right? And so yeah. eating is so fundamental to life and not to mention has such a dramatic impact on yeah. the way that we feel <laughs> physiologically, emotionally, energetically, mentally, all of these things. It's a great place to start. And I guess the last piece I'll say about that is that if you, you are, it, it, I hope everybody's aware of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If we need like a psychology 101 uh, reboot, it's this, it's a theory um, that in order to self-actualize and perform at our very best, we need to fulfill certain, uh, certain innate human needs from, uh, in priority from the bottom up. And at the bottom of that, of that ring is health, your health. <laughs> so health is the bedrock of a meaningful and productive life. And that means that no matter how successful you are in other areas of life and business, there's no such thing as success without being successful with your health and constantly working on that. And like I said before, you can't be healthy unless you have a healthy relationship with food. Yeah. That sets the foundation for the work that I do just about anybody who I'm working with, whether it's with my company Evolution Eats or with whether I'm working, you know, in, a, in an intensive one-on-one -on -one way with an entrepreneur of some sort. Yeah. The, there, you touched on something that I want to go back to because I think it's a really fascinating dynamic. I mean, fundamentally, the way, and I think most people can, can totally uh, uh, relate to the, the dynamic you described about using food for essentially for the wrong thing, right? So yeah, food, there's so much complexity around eating, right. man. God, yeah, absolutely. Right. So it's interesting, this dynamic that you're using is sort of a meta principle that, uh, that, that mastering your diet and your health is about fundamentally finding the right use for the right tool. So as opposed to yeah. going to the wrong tool for the wrong thing. And what you're describing is that in peak performance, it seems – this this is the same principle. Fundamentally, in anything that we do, there are probably things that we're using the wrong tool for mm. to get the wrong result. And right. it's self-defeating or it's, uh, you know, it's just energy draining or whatever. But fundamentally, it's a, this seems to be about self-mastery in the end. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's so, like, the, that context that you just described is so disempowering, right? Because you're, you're, you're using something that you think is going to make you feel better or, or, or be good for you, be beneficial, have a positive output. And it's not, it's actually designed to not do that, but you're not necessarily aware of that. So you're basically trapped inside of a, inside of a box that has you starting the video like, or inside of a video game in which you keep falling off the cliff and have to start over again. Right. You're not, you can't see, it's like you're the character in the video game that can only see so far ahead. You're not the player of the video game. And what I want to help you do is become the player in the video game. I mean, Ray Dalio talks a lot about this in his book, Principles, about every action and decision that you make having a second and third and fourth order consequence. It's not just the first order consequences. There's a, there's a series of them. Yeah. And in that, in that way, when you think about your actions and your choices you can see that there's a whole string of things that happen. And when it comes to food or basic coping mechanisms that we take on, um, we're only thinking about our emotional needs in that moment itself. And if I can right. help you start thinking of sourcing yourself and making choices for yourself in life, no matter if it's eating or whatever, as a as the lead domino in a series of dominoes, then all of a sudden you can start to think more globally about what's going on 
Mm. and to understand that you are actually the video game player who can see ahead. You can see that the cliff is coming, so you better you know, power up or whatever, or, or, or find the bouncy thing that you can bounce over you know, <laughs> to, to complete that not degrading metaphor. <laughs> but uh, 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 does it, so that, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, like, to, to kind of continue on that, uh, that, that train of thought, what's, it seems like this, there's this element, this common element, because as I look at, like, like, like I think about food and my relationship with food, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there are clearly uh, long-term or even medium-term, like not that far out impacts based on uh, what food does. And yet our short-term decision-making seems completely misaligned with it. And we have such a hard time, I think, as human beings, like connecting these dots together where we can feel the medium term impact. Like I can eat something like, I'll just give you a really good example. Like I love, I love pizza. I love pizza with extra cheese and it makes as a me- New Yorker and an Italian. I a hundred percent understand. Yeah, I'm exactly. a New, New Yorker transplanted to Los Angeles. So right. I'm, and I'm New Yorker and Italian too. So that's exactly so it. We're but totally effed. We're that's totally, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can curse on, if this is friendly, <laughs> family friendly. So oh, I, 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 said know, it's, I, <laughs> I think we're, I think we all are aligned with that, but yeah. that stuff messes me up. It really does. It's bad, but I love it. And in that moment, it's like the thing that I want or crave. And yet, and it's not that far down the road. It's not more than a couple of hours before I can start to feel the physiological effects of that. But as a human being, it's really tough to connect those dots, but it feels like that's exactly the, con- the, the concept of pretty much anything. Like go move over into productivity. The same thing's true. Like I can get onto social media and waste a bunch of time on Facebook and that feels really good. And the medium term impact is that I don't get any of those projects done that I was supposed to today. But again, my brain's having a hard time connecting the dots between those two things. How do we fight against that impulse? Well, it's really hard. So the, the, first, the first answer is it's really hard to fight that impulse in the moment itself. Yeah. So, so in order to offset that like heroic challenge, uh, what I help my people do is create a whole lifestyle of health and empowerment so that you're already so that you're not setting yourself up for those situations so that you're instead more globally answering for the question answering that question instead of relying on willpower to get you by because willpower is no strategy at all it's hit or miss some days you might be able to say god i'm not gonna have the pizza but most days you're gonna say yes right because we're physiologically, emotionally, mentally addicted to it. And we're also like extremely bent towards satisfying pleasures and relieving pain. Like those are our most primal needs. Right. So sad. So, so sad, like, like satisfying pleasure, stimulating pleasure that goes way down to the reptilian cells. It, it yeah. completely defies the logic. So like I, my job is to help set you up for ultimate success so that you're you're, you're not putting yourselves in those really challenging situations. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, and which, which, which is really hard for entrepreneurs, uh, to, to make, to make this specific to entrepreneurs for a second, because so many of us are addicted, not just addicted to things that help us cope and get by. Why do we do that? Well, because we're actually, we're addicted to working, and yeah. to, to hustling, to this right. hustling grind culture, right? That's right. taught us that in order to be successful, we need to sacrifice ourselves in some way, shape, or form, right? Right. And so like almost every highly successful entrepreneur and self-starter I know goes to great lengths to bend reality in their favor, often sacrificing basic human needs like their health and wellness to get ahead in their business or, yep. or career. And like, this is what, you know, this, this sort of hustle is what Gary Vee has popularized and which we as a culture have you know, somewhat mistakenly glorified, but uh, without going, making Gary Vee wrong or whatever, it, it's confusing because this works, you know, right. all around us are, are examples of millionaires and 
billionaires who have burned the candles at both ends in their early days, like sleeping on under their desks and surviving on ramen noodles and monster energy drinks. Um, and, and, it, and, and, and it works, it, it works to get, a, it works and it gets you ahead when you will yourself into a whole new level of productivity and output and energy and focus on something, but there's a cost to it. Yeah. There's a cost to it. And that's more often than not yourself, because in order to sustain that impossible work schedule and that killer drive and work ethic, there's other things that we sacrifice to, to, to feed that thing, to feed that beast. And a lot of us end up adopting very unhealthy habits and behaviors to feed that because it feels good in the short term or it works in the short term, but it only works for so long. Right. And so there's so many entrepreneurs I know who have built up, you know, lifestyles of lack of health actually, and yet are still doing well. Right. <laughs> but like, and so the, the fact is that they're making money and it's like, things are working, but what, but, but really are they working? Like how absolutely exhausted are you? How worn right. out are you? How often do you feel like you're walking on that tightrope and you have to hold on so tightly or else everything is going to collapse, right? Like, are you really, sur are you surviving or are you actually, you know, are you thriving? And I hate that, right. that stereotype, but like, how are you practicing sourcing yourself to be the best leader that you are? Or are you not? Are you really just surviving because that's the right. way that you learned how to do it? And I think the answer for many of us is that we weren't taught how to be an entrepreneur. Like we didn't, we just figured it out. And most of us figured it out by working harder than absolutely everybody else right. and making that our sole obsession in the world and everything else becoming a second, third, fourth order priority well below that. And so once you accomplish a certain level of success, it's really start, it's time to start looking at the rest of life because you can't keep ignoring these, these, these crucial elemental human needs like your health and expect to keep succeeding. Um, right. It, it becomes about playing the long term, thinking about the order right. of consequences to your choices and now start setting the foundation for your lifetime success. And you can't do that, in my opinion, without really working on your health. And, um, yeah. and like, like, like we said, your health is so influenced by what you're eating, then that that's the best place to start. Yeah. Well, and, and it goes back to that theme again of um, sacrificing the long-term benefit for yeah. short-term gain. And what's really ironic about that, I think, in the entrepreneurial community is that we entrepreneurs, we are sort of, uh, we, we're supposed to be programmed to sacrifice, right? The whole concept of hustling and grinding is about sacrificing some short-term want for some long-term gain, but right. you're just doing it the wrong way. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's true. We, so like our insane work ethic, we have this willingness to sacrifice short-term comforts for long-term ambitions, right? right? And so that's the, primary source of your success but but like we've been saying that's also the soul the source of your limitations yeah. right because when you start sacrificing sleep uh eating tons of sugar ordering takeout all the time over caffeinating to the point of absurdity not getting up from, for your from your desk for an entire day right con constantly canceling social plans you know numbing out on alcohol or whatever poison that you choose i mean that's the trade-off to living an all-or-nothing lifestyle. Right. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly admirable. People do it because they're so connected to the thing that they're building, um, their mission, their clients, their team, whatever. It's admirable, but, the, but it's not honorable because you're not honoring yourself in the, ultimately. And, and, and so that's just uh, that's something to, that you really are going well, to you're gonna have to look at it at some yeah, point. And as you pointed out earlier, and these messages are so misleading where, where this, this culture comes from, because, you know, I spent the first 15 years of my career in the high tech space, and uh, it, it's, it's almost like a joke of the p folks who start a, a startup, a tech startup, that they sleep in their car, you know, for the first 
couple of years to get things off the ground. And um, recently there was, uh, there were a couple of talks given by, so Mark Zuckerberg gave a talk. Um, there were a couple of other tech leaders that, that were talking about this sacrifice, this, you know, if you, if you have a dream, you need to like, you know, put aside your life, your friends, your, your goal, your, your short-term goals to get this long-term thing. And it was reinforcing this idea. And I remember having this conversation with someone who said, you know, but how can you argue with these folks, you know, when, when they've been so successful? And it, I remarked, you know, it, the, the audience for those talks are their employees. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're actually trying to get their employees to sacrifice their life, their goals, their yeah. short-term ambitions to achieve their objective. And so there's this very cynical uh, underlying uh, theme behind this hustle and grind culture, which I find really, like, I, I just like, I kind of want to shout from the rooftops, like, that's not the plan. Like, that's, that's not the success plan. That's just someone's cynical view of it. I, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. Always, <laughs> always, always remember or always uh, distinguish who is the audience that these people are talking to. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, sorry, go for it. No, I was just going to pivot really quickly because I want to I wanted get into how you work with folks mm. and what that process looks like. So do you mind sharing with us a little bit about what, like, let's take an entrepreneur um, and they're, they're looking for peak performance. Uh, they are, uh, obviously health and diet is a, is a component of it, but you've alluded to some other things as well. Walk us through a little bit about what that process looks like. How are you working with uh, those folks at this point? Uh, sure. So, so for my company, Evolution Eats, which, um, which is all about creating a lifestyle of health focused on mastering your diets and, and creating uh, habits in different domains of your life, so very simple habits in different, uh, different domains of your life to support your global overall success so that you're, like we said before, um, learning how to channel those emotional needs not through eating or whatever unhealthy coping mechanisms you're taking on, but through other things that are, that are important to you. And so I guess let's, let's start there. We, we have all these emotional needs and instead of making them wrong, like instead of saying it's wrong for you to feel sad or depressed, uh, that's, that's just being a human. And when you're an entrepreneur, you experience the whole spectrum of, of, of emotions all the time right. and like in 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 hyper speed right? right like how many how many in one week alone you could go through the entire range of human experience and yeah. feel complete so yeah. uh it's not to make those 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 emotional those, those emotions or the emotional need which is some sort of comfort or relief or stimulation or what fulfillment it's not to make that wrong yeah. we want to honor that so we want to build habits in your life simple routines that have you um, not having to deliberately think about what should I do about this, but have practiced that, have trained that into a lifestyle. So we talk a lot about, you know, simple things, nothing that I say, I'm not Einstein here, but it's about the practice of making this. Um, well, it's about making this a practice for yourself. Self mastery yeah. is a practice, which means honoring yourself is a practice. Health is a practice. It's not a goal that you accomplish. So most people think about their health as a goal that they're accomplishing, like right. lose, lose 30 pounds in right. 30 days or something, right. which accomplish implies completion, which implies forgetting about. And that's never going to work. Dieting or, or trying to accomplish a weight loss goal within a certain time frame and doing a bunch of stuff to satisfy that goal, help, you might accomplish the goal, but you're never going to learn. Right. You're not going to learn how to actually make that real for you. So I think of your health as a skill. I think of mastery peak performance as a skill that you have to practice throughout the course of your entire life. Right. So, yeah. in, so we want to construct at various points throughout your day, understanding where your trigger zones are, particularly and really starting there, designing simple habits, simple practices that no matter what, if it's a good day, if it's a bad day, if you're feeling great, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling whatever that you've committed to, you've mm -hmm. committed to, to, to this practice, whether that's meditation, whether that's exercise, uh, whether that's calling up somebody that you really care about, certainly eating at uh, consistent times throughout the day, you've committed to that. 
Yeah. So we're helping people design a life of commitment. More often than not, people are um, living a life designed by circumstances. Yeah. We have all these circumstances and we react to them and, you know, we might do really well. There are a lot of people who do very well where they're just reacting to things all the time. Um, but there's a limit. I think partially. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we see right. some, I think, little windows of that, but I don't think it's a good long-term strategy. Absolutely yeah. not. No, there's a cap to, uh, to how good it gets and it's exhausting. Yeah, so, it is exhausting. That is true. So we want to help people build a life of commitment where they're committed to their business and they're committed to their health right? Uh, and it's not either or, it's not a trade-off. You can be committed to, to, your, to, to, to priorities and have principles that hold them up. And so really the most important thing about all this is having an environment that like an internal and external environment in which you've agreed to enter into that has you bound to that commitment, right? So that's why whether I'm whether somebody's enrolled in our program at Evolution Eat or it's you know it's a one-on-one -on -one client who's working with me, um, it, coaching is the modality that we use because it bounds people to relationship mm -hmm. and to feeling um, accepted and acknowledged for who they are, as opposed to projecting who you're supposed to be and trying to like fix all this shit. Uh, because right. <laughs> cause you think you're supposed to be this way. It's like, right. <laughs> if you actually want to build you up, then we have to get utterly clearly honest with who you are right now and focus on that person. So mm -hmm. we have all these practices that are designed around radical, being like radically transparent with what's really happening, like mm -hmm. sharing that with your coach. So if you're, you know, eating the cookie right, or, or eating t like sleeves of cookies throughout the day, or you're <laughs> drinking too much, like, right. like sharing that as much as you're sharing the wins, right. because we have to get radically honest with what's actually going on so that we can actually work on that thing. Right. Just as if you were learning how to play an instrument, it would do you, do you no good if you were lying to your teacher and you said, yeah, I can, I got, you know, the chorus of that song nailing it. And then you show up to practice and you can't play. Right. Like, right. We actually like if you have if you if you can't figure out that riff, then you're gonna sit down with your instructor and practice it through. You're not gonna ignore it or pretend right. that it's not there. Right. You're gonna practice it, and it doesn't mean anything about you as a human being. It doesn't mean that you suck or you're wrong or you're bad or you're stupid or anything. It just means that we need to keep practicing, and that's the thing that separates, um, I think, in the health space, uh, my companies from anything else that I've seen is that this is a long-term practice. We absolutely yeah. do not sell a short-term solution. Those th there's plenty of that shit out there. I'm not saying it's wrong or bad either because some people just can never motivate themselves unless they, they go that route. But yeah. ultimately the th what you have to do to be successful is build a lifestyle that is designed to get you everything that you want. And that's yeah. comprised of habits that are like new things that you're taking on to support that person, but also rewriting those old habits that are keeping you from getting there. Right. And that just takes time and effort and practice. So, yeah. um, so we work with people for a long time. I would love to, I, I know what you're going to say to me, uh, our, our program at Evolution Eat is six months long. It is not yeah. a three month program. Yeah. And the reason for that is, and it's not sexy is because, I have never seen anybody radically change their life in three months. Yeah. And I am a hundred percent committed to helping people really change their life. And I do not believe that that's possible in less than six months. And yeah. so we've created a program that really holds people through that entire experience. That's awesome. And, well, no, the, yeah. the one thing you always will hear me say, and I tell everybody this is that there is no one right way to do anything. Right. There are simply best practices and yes. there are other situations that, have things, uh, you know, show up a little bit differently. So no, I mean, I, I see a lot of people with six month pro six month programs and they are very effective because they're specifically honed in on achieving that objective and it takes six months to do with them. It's just no way around it. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, I've toyed with the three and, um, it is just something in my, in my soul that, that won't, that won't put up with that. Like I just, <laughs> I just can't do it. I just yeah. can't do it. So no, no, no. I, I, I've totally stopped, I've, and I've stopped making myself wrong for it. I'm just like, look, this is, 
This yeah. is our way. And yeah. we're, we're going to be the company that obsesses about the long term. Like, I'm great with that because it's so different than anybody, any other program that I've seen by and large. So like, yeah, that's my thing. We're, we're really about helping you focus on the long term and building a lifestyle, which is not just an accomplishment that you get now, but something that you take with you forever. That's, yeah. that's my, that's my. Well, what you're describing is you're describing essentially a process where you're pre-programming, right? This is, you, you had, you had talked about how important it is to be ready for the moment before it happens. That's, essentially pre-programming um, mm -hmm. to make sure that there's a new, a new lifestyle, a new way of, of behaving in those moments, um, getting people habits that reinforce that pre-programming and then immersing people into a culture of, of, of radical accountability. I mean, I think yeah. that's, that's great. That's a terrific uh, yeah. infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. And it is radical. It's, it's, ra <laughs> it's every day. It's every day. So I'll, here's the here's our secret sauce. I don't I don't I'm happy to share it. Uh, as far as the so for Evolution Eat, we have you instead of what doesn't work or what works very poorly is counting calories, counting macros, counting all, obsessing about all that stuff. Especially if you're early. So yes, that works if you're already at a certain level of proficiency. So mm -hmm. I want to distinguish that. If you're already somebody who's like killing it and and you want to get from like good to great or great to excellent. Yeah. There's going to be an element. There's going to be a matter of like scientifically studying what you're doing, but for evolution eat, as opposed to my one-on-one -on -one coaching, let's say we're here to speak to the general population who by and large has, is very confused about how to live a life of health and right. what to do about it all. So when you're at that more like beginner phase of the growth and your, your, your learning curve, we are, what we don't want to do is obsess about the micro details that get people all confused. Yeah. We want to have a very binary system of knowing, am I doing this right? Or am I doing this wrong? And doing this right means you're taking a photo of what you're eating. So we have our, our members take photographs of every single thing that they eat so that they can start self-coaching themselves. When you yeah. take a photograph of what you're eating, it right. makes you be extremely mindful about your decision-making. And you then can start asking yourself, is that actually what I want? Do I really want to share that with my coach in the group? Right? Because right. it's a group program too. So it's everybody's collaborating on a daily basis and you're yeah. showing up for each other. Yeah. And then that element of sharing where it's like, I'm sharing this with people really is confronting, but also has you being accepted accepted as an individual, despite your choices, despite having nice. an ice cream sundae on a Tuesday. <laughs> it's like, I, my, my people still are going to be there for me and support me, even if I make a mistake. And that's yeah. really important as well, especially for people who really need help in this, in this area, which sure. there's many of us because, you know, our relationship with food and eating is intensely intimate and very personal. You know, when, when you overeat something or eat a bunch of crap, how often is that when you're with other people, it's yeah. I have a hunch it's more often than not late at night by yourself or scattered throughout the day because you're just like mindlessly going up to the coffee machine right. and just like eating the chocolates next to it, right? Like <laughs> it's just it's one or the other, but it's always right. something that you're just doing by yourself, or more right. often than not something that's so that element of sharing and vulnerability and expression and camaraderie and yes, radical accountability, daily practice where you're tracking your choices. That's it. Are you taking the photo? That means you're, you're op you've opted in. You've opted into the daily practice. And that's yeah. it. Over time, I, I know that you'll start self-coaching yourself to make better choices, not to mention you have a coach and you have a team to also help you with that feedback. But um, it's that. It's like, am I practicing or not? Because with food and diet and all this, we all know that consistency is the number one thing. So yeah. this is like, are you being consistent or not? Yes or no? And if you are, it will self, it will answer for itself over the long run. It, you'll, that start, that will start to self-regulate. You'll start to make better and better decisions. Yeah. It, it, you've tapped into a dynamic that because I, I want to tie this back to where we started the conversation when you talked about food addiction, mm. you've tapped into this dynamic where you've created a culture of acceptance and support, which uh, you know, the scientists have already shown for addiction treatment of any kind 
is a required element. This, yeah. this community of, of support and no matter what decision I make, I'm not going to get abandoned by that support community. Right. They're going to continue to be there so that as I'm sort of navigating those different choices and trying to figure out how to make it work, I still have my community. So you've, you've tapped into that exact dynamic as you're, I mean, it, wh whether someone actually has a, you know, whatever the clinical definition of addiction is, or if they're just trying to um, get, become master of their own health, yeah. you've, you've established essentially the foundation for success. Yeah, I like to think that's true. Thank you yeah. for acknowledging no, that. That's great. Uh, look, Daniel, we are uh, totally out of time and I really apologize because I would love to talk about this more with you, but it's I know good. you're super busy and I asked for a, a small commitment of time from you and you were really gracious to provide that. But before we go, for those uh, folks who are listening that want to connect with you, what's a great place for them to go to get this conversation kicked off with you? Yeah. Um, so two things. Uh, we I've created this amazing free course for anybody who wants to get, who really wants to learn our basic principles and our philosophy and start really working on their health at Evolution Eats. It's, if you, if you go to evolutioneats.com forward slash join, okay. then you get the, the program for free. It's like five hours of really awesome uh, content. And there's a ways of setting up uh, free coaching calls with, with me through that. And for anybody who's interested in, in, in jumpstarting the conversation and you really want to connect around uh, these ideas of mastery and peak performance, and um, uh, then I'm always happy to, uh, to just be a resource to you and also to, um, to see where you're at and what's going on. And you, you can awesome. reach out by just uh, emailing directly at daniel at evolutioneat.com and put... Uh, put the name of the podcast in the subject line and um, either myself or my assistant will flag that down. So awesome. That's yeah. very generous of you, both oh, of man. the course and with your time. So thanks very much. And those of you who are watching this, a link will be right below the video. If you're uh, listening via audio, it's on the show notes page. So if you happen to be listening to this out and about, come on over to the show notes page and you can click through directly to that link. Um, thanks for that uh, generous offer. Really appreciate that, Daniel. Yeah, th Frank, thanks for having me. I know we could we could talk about this forever, so we'll, we'll take it <laughs> offline or maybe we'll do a round two one day. But yeah, seriously, way, I'll, I'll come out to LA. We'll hang out. We'll chat. We'll hang out. We'll get some, <laughs> we'll eat some green shit. And uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, That's yeah. awesome. All right, man. Uh, well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. I really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for listening and joining in today on this episode. I uh, really appreciate it. Know you are busy. You got a lot of things you could be doing with your time. So if you choose to, listen in. Uh, we're honored that you've uh, given us that, uh, that gift of time. We will uh, uh, be in touch with you um, and make sure that I, I just want to reiterate this element of habit forming and um, performance that Daniel's talking about. I really think it's um, the difference between people who long term can be uh, entrepreneurial and people who just burn out very quickly. I, I, I do think it's a <laughs> A critical element. So I encourage you to take a look at that. And um, thanks again, Daniel, for the the uh, the offer. That's very generous. And we will see you all next time. All right, take care. Bye bye.